Well, TCL thought they could sneak one by me again, but as always, these vigilant eyes and sweaty hands got all over their new technology, which was, as Digital Trends described, hiding in plain sight at their booth at CES 2025. But what is QDEL? Why is it so exciting? Well, QDEL, or Quantum Dot Electroluminescent Display, is the technology which should be, in theory, dethroning OLED and QD OLED. Now, the reason as to why I'm saying that is because unlike OLED, there should not be the risk of burn-in from organic material. Instead, the quantum dots themselves should be directly excited by electricity, allowing for, in theory, great brightness, as well as all the advantages of OLED, such as their near instantaneous response times. At least, hopefully, we'll wait and see when we get our hands on an actual model, but definitely looked good at CES. The per pixel local dimming, which is absolutely excellent, allowing for the highest contrast possible, as well as pure black. And unlike QD OLED, it didn't really seem to be lighting up either. So it could actually be a significant enhancement over QD OLED. So OLED better bend over and kiss their ass goodbye, because on top of all that, it should also be actually much cheaper to produce. OLED is notorious for being very, very expensive to produce. And no matter how much brighter they make it or how many units they sell, at a certain point, it just simply cannot get any cheaper. QDEL can get cheaper and hopefully this will be replacing OLED in the not too distant future. Now, last year, Digital Trends got some video of it that let's be honest, frankly, that engineering sample just didn't look that great. But this year, what TCL was showing, I could see as being a real product. It was very, very good and had some very significant improvements in terms of the color as well as possibly brightness as well. And in fact, if we take a look at the actual specifications of the display, which I captured on camera. This monitor was a 2880 by 1800 display on a laptop, which is getting pretty close to 4K, so that's pretty great. And it actually had 85% BT2020 coverage, which I would consider to be as good, if not better than QD OLED. So that's really, really good color performance. And even more shockingly, it had up to 400 nits of brightness. And in fact, from what I understand, I think QDEL should actually have higher full screen brightness, but we'll have to wait and see. And of course, less than one millisecond response times up to 120 Hertz refresh rate and one million to one contrast ratio, although you might as well just call it infinite to one. And with the much better black levels than QD OLED, in my opinion, QDEL should absolutely replace QD OLED and should be better in almost every conceivable way. And again, this product looks like it's just about ready to launch. So why hasn't it launched despite the fact that it looks so great, especially with the glossy coating that it had at CES? And from what I understand, when I was talking to a TCL employee or engineer there is that unfortunately, they are still having some issues with the blue stability on QDEL. It sounds like they're making significant progress and possibly even by next year, this is just me kind of theorizing here, nothing official from TCL, but it seems like maybe by next year, they might finally have something good enough to actually ship. Maybe they won't, maybe it's still a few years off, but based on what I saw, it seems like we're getting very, very close to real products shipping soon, which can hopefully not only make for better displays in general, but significantly enhance PC monitors that have very poor HDR performance in pretty much any form. Now, one other thing I wanted to show you guys is actually the subpixel arrangement on the QDEL display. Now, unlike the RGB OLED that I made a video on that TCL was also showing, this is not in a regular subpixel arrangement. No, unfortunately, it is a little bit triangular, much like QD OLED. So that's going to be the one problem that could persist from QD OLED if this actually ends up being the final revision. But by next year, I do expect you'll probably see a model hitting in excess of 600 nits. I think the full screen brightness is going to be significantly higher. I think the blue stability should be significantly better. And you may even again finally see a real monitor 
on display, hopefully at higher than 120 hertz as well, as typically the 120 hertz isn't to my understanding, necessarily a limitation of the technology, but just a limitation of what TCL is showing on their engineering samples. And it could probably be pushed much, much higher, likely upwards of 240 hertz and beyond, much like what you see on current displays. But that's all just a theory at this point in time. What I can tell you is that this is probably one of the best looking display technologies that was shown at CES 2025. And once again, I think OLED's time in the sunlight might be limited if this ends up releasing in the near future. Whether you're looking to connect a new console, gaming PC, or just need a fast and reliable HDMI cable to connect over long distances, Rupro has you covered with their certified 8K HDMI 2.1 fiber optic cable available in sizes of up to 50 feet and can deliver a perfect full 48 gigabits per second connection over distances other cables could only dream of reaching. And with 48 gigabits per second of bandwidth, it can easily drive 8K 60 FPS or 4K 144 FPS 10-bit HDR video through its ultra-thin, flexible, and durable housing and it even supports ER. So if you're in the market for a cable that can drive a beautiful new TV or monitor, be sure to check out Rupro on Amazon today.